I'm Kathleen Choi, a Korean chef now living in the U.S. My passion is creating healthy and delicious foods using some of my favorite Korean ingredients. Join me in learning about Korean foods, ingredients, and culture. Next on Kathleen's Korean Kitchen. Today, I'll be sharing with you recipes of some of the most elaborate foods that Korean royalty once dined on, the Royal Palace Cuisines, and share with you the Korean history behind them. I'll first make a well-balanced and delicious appetizer dish called Gujol Pan, made with eight different ingredients with thin round flat cakes. Next, a symbolic and delicious dish called Tang Pyeong Che. And later, one of the most popular and nutritious Korean noodle dish called Chap Che. I'll share with you a very traditional yet delicious beverage called Shik He. In today's episode, I invite you to join me in exploring some of the most elaborate specialty dishes known as Kung Jung Yori that were once prepared and served only at the king's court during this fascinating period in Korean history. Before Korea was divided into two countries shortly after World War II, the Korean peninsula was comprised of eight different provinces ruled by the Joseon dynasty, dating back almost five centuries. Royal cuisine has been deeply rooted in Korean tradition since late 14th century. Each dish embodies all the aspects of beauty, artistry, and nutrition, as well as tradition and historical background of Korea. The foods of the royal palace also reflected the various religious backgrounds and characteristics of different regions, as well as the affluent nature of the past kings who once ruled Korea. Unlike a commoner's meal, the meals prepared for the royal family were not seasonal and they varied significantly on a daily basis. The best quality agricultural produce and seafoods gathered from the eight provinces of Korea were presented to the king by respected governors each month, providing the royal chefs a wide variety of ingredients to use in serving the royal family. In general, 12 dishes were served along with rice and soup, served in finely polished bronzeware known as pangja. Specialty dishes such as shinsollo, meaning heavenly casserole, an indispensable crown jewel of the royal palace cuisine served in a traditional metal hot pot contains beef and radish as well as meatballs, seafoods, mushrooms, vegetables, and nuts and boiled together to create a colorful and flavorful casserole dish. Kujol pan is another popular dish that is served in a nine-sectioned special dish presented in an aesthetically elegant manner. These royal cuisines served today are based on the same recipes of these elite royal chefs and were handed down for generations. You can almost taste Korean history come alive in your mouth when you taste these dishes. Today, I am at a Korean restaurant called Yong Susan in LA that specializes in royal palace cuisines. Upon arrival, I was escorted into the kitchen where the executive chef was waiting for me to share her recipes behind some of the most popular royal palace cuisines that are served at the restaurant. Even today, most of the top chefs in traditional Korean restaurants are women who have been taught to prepare the foods that are based on family recipes and tradition and learned techniques that have been passed down for generations from mothers to daughters. So today, I'm going to share with you two very popular royal palace cuisines, Gujol Pan and Tang Pyeong Che. 
Now the key to making kujalpan is to prepare various colored ingredients such as namu, which is a variety of seasoned vegetables and mushrooms that are julienned and pan fried along with beef and seafoods. The eight ingredients for the filling that I've prepared for the kujalpan dish are carrots, shiitake mushrooms, eggs, minced beef, uwong, also known as kubo or burdock root, cucumber, and beef tripe. As you can see, everything has been pre-sliced, julienned, and seasoned. In the case of cucumber, only the green part is used in the dish, not just for the color, but also for the texture. So it's important to first grate the surface evenly to get the finely shredded green cucumber skin. Then they are sauteed lightly in a pan with a little bit of vegetable oil and a teaspoon of salt. In Korean cuisine, we make thin egg crepes for garnishing foods. Usually the egg whites are separated from the egg yolk so that we have two distinct colors. Another important ingredient used for kujol pan is the tripes, which usually comes in a tightly rolled form, and it's easier to slice them into thin strips when they are in a semi-frozen state. The same process applies to the beef, and usually thinly sliced sirloin or ribeye cuts are recommended. There are two steps in preparing the beef. It is first cooked lightly in a pan with some soy sauce and sugar, which takes only a few seconds. Then it is strained to remove the excess liquid. The beef is then sauteed for the second time in a little bit of soy sauce to give it the dark color and salty flavor. The shiitake mushrooms and burdock roots are also sauteed with soy sauce, a little bit of sugar, and minced garlic. All I have to do is start making the round flat cakes. First, heat a non-stick pan and drizzle a small amount of vegetable oil. And I've actually wiped it using a paper towel because we don't want too much oil, but just enough heat to make the crepes. And make sure it's in extremely low heat. I have two different kinds of batters because it's nice to combine both the clear and the green color crepes. In a deep bowl, combine three heaping tablespoons of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of egg white, and a cup of spinach juice. You have to go through another step to strain the batter and then use the filtered creamy substance. This is the secret to making really nice and smooth textured flat cakes. Using a metal spoon, I'm going to scoop up a spoonful of batter onto the pan. Make sure you spread it thinly on the pan like this. Make it really round. There, I think it's ready. Just flip it over like this. Perfect. This one's done, so I'm going to remove it and put it in the center of the plate. Look at this color, it's beautiful green. For today, I'm going to just make one simple sauce by combining some yellow mustard, soy sauce, a little bit of vinegar, all in the same ratio. The next dish I'll be making is called Tang Pyeong Che. It's actually a dish that is served by combining ingredients of two plates. The dish was derived from a famous story of a king named Yongjo, whose attempt was to resolve conflicts between four political parties during the Joseon dynasty. When the king presented Tang Pyeongche before the government officers and other politicians, he explained to them about the four main ingredients with four distinct colors and flavors. But when they were mixed together, the flavors harmonized well and provided a unique and wonderful taste. 
The first dish consists of julienne mung bean jelly, mung bean sprouts, cucumber, shiitake mushrooms, and broiled seaweed. First, you'll need to slice it into thin sheets and then julienne them. So unlike the kujol pan, what you do is you have to mix all the ingredients in a bowl all together. Starting with the julienne mung bean jelly and mung bean sprouts which have been lightly blanched in boiling water, seasoned with a little bit of salt and sesame oil. Then the seasoned shiitake mushrooms and cucumber which have been pickled and lightly salted. And finally, the boiled kim or seaweed. All I'm going to add is some toasted sesame seeds and sesame oil. And mix all the ingredients thoroughly so they are seasoned evenly. Now for the second plate, I have about 3 ounces of pre julienne Minari watercrust. The Minari watercrust have been blanched and squeezed of water and it's been seasoned with some minced garlic, sesame oil and a little bit of salt. What you see here is actually a mixture of taken radish uh, seasoned with some garlic, salt and some red chili pepper. Now the main ingredient for this plate is the mung bean sprouts and I'm going to add a little bit more of this watercrust because it needs the green color and of course the apricots that would add a really nice sweet flavor to it and this is the pre-mixed daikon radish. All I'm going to add is a little bit more sesame oil and toasted sesame seeds. So it's time to combine both plates together to create our delicious Tang Pyeong Che. Before we move on to the next recipe, we need to check in with our liquid chef Woody and see what royal creation he has for us today using one of the ingredients, which is pine nuts. Kathleen's given me the challenge of using dates, little Korean dates, otherwise known as daechu, I think they're called. So they're not as big as your normal dates that you would get from sort of the Middle East, but they're still really sweet and quite tasty. And then I've also taken the idea of taking pine nuts and putting it into the whole mix as well, because they do have the subtle flavor and the nuttiness is something I'm looking for. These, their Korean name is jat. So I've made a syrup. Now syrups for me are really a king thing. In my book, you'll find syrups uh, all at the beginning of it and lots of recipes through it. So this is a unique one I've made just for Kathleen's uh, special cocktail session here. And so equal amounts, sugar and water, and then add pine nuts, I've roasted them as well, some cinnamon, fresh ginger, and of course, half a cup of the dates or the daechu. And then we cook that for about 20 minutes, let it cool, and you have a beautiful syrup that you can add to your, your cocktail. So today, we're gonna make a fizz, and we're gonna call it a daechu fizz. So first of all, we wanna get a little bit, like some really cool ice cubes in here. Don't be afraid to use your hands. Some people just think you can't touch ice with your hands for some reason, but it's quite cool. So let those chill over there. Um, the whole thing about a fizz is we use something uh, sweet and sour. So the sweetness is coming from this uh, beautiful syrup that we just made. And I press one line. And this is going to work beautifully with the, the spiciness and the sweetness of the syrup. So you can just pop a little bit in here. Doesn't matter if the other ingredients go in at all. Um, for me, soju has to be the ingredient to use. You could use vodka, you could use gin, but on this occasion, we're just going straight for the soju. And we want to get that nice and cold and shake it up. Like so and strain that. Oh, I've got it normally, of course, if it's called a fizz, you're gonna be saying, what's it gonna be on top? What's he gonna put in there? Well, normally we'd use club soda, but today I've got something that's traditionally Korean. Korean town is full of these kinds of drinks. They're called milkies. It is actually melon flavored. So we've got lots of flavors going on in here. 
just a really cool looking cocktail that you can serve as your party starter at your next Korean barbecue. Over to you, Kathleen. Get it cooking. Mm. That is amazing. Thanks, Woody. There's a drink that even a Korean king would have approved of. My next recipe is a popular Korean noodle dish called chapche, typically made with sweet potato noodles or glass noodles mixed with seasoned vegetables, mushrooms, and beef. Except this time, I won't be using the beef, so it will be a light vegetarian dish. Chapche is served at special occasions and festivals throughout the year in Korea, and one of the most popular dish even served today in the Korean president's home called the Blue House, when foreign dignitaries are being entertained. There is a couple of different ways to cook the glass noodles. You can boil it in hot water for a few minutes or soak them in lukewarm water until they soften and then pan fry the noodles in oil with a little bit of soy sauce. In my case, I have pre-soaked the noodles in delicious kalbi sauce, so it's not only cooked but well seasoned. In a bowl, I'm going to mix the seasoned glass noodles with some sliced onions, shredded carrots, meaty white oyster mushrooms, which have been thinly sliced, and my favorite shiitake mushrooms. Uh, one of the most common ingredients used for chapche is the spinach, but this time I thought a little bit of change would be good, and I love broccoli, which I've blanched so it's a little soft, some pre-soaked earwood mushrooms, commonly used for chapche, and to this some sesame oil, and a pinch of sea salt. They toast the sesame seeds again. If you're not used to eating raw mushrooms and vegetables, you can always saute them with a little bit of cooking oil. My next recipe is a sweet Korean rice punch called shikke, and it's also one of the most common dessert drinks served to the guests at the Blue House. This classic Korean drink is usually served after a meal as a digestive and made during major holidays and on special occasions. It's pretty similar to the Mexican drink ochata, except that in the Korean version, we don't add any condensed milk, and it's served with pine nuts. Based on my experience, the best cookware for making shikke is using the rice cooker because when it is in warm setting, it gets to about 150 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the perfect temperature for the fermentation to take place. First, you need to mix and soak two cups of malt or barley flour with 10 cups of water for about two hours. In another bowl, do the same with two cups of sweet rice and five cups of water. Since the rice has previously been soaked in water, just add additional cup and a half of water and cook it in the rice cooker. As for the malt mixture, after two hours, you'll see that the liquid is separated from the solids. So using a cheesecloth or a sieve, carefully strain just the clear liquid onto a bowl because that's the part you need to combine with the sweet rice when it's cooked. It requires a six hour fermentation process. It's time to pour the liquid onto the pot with a little more water and other ingredients. Let it boil for additional 10 minutes, then leave it aside to steep and cool off. Pour the shikke in a jug and chill in the fridge for a few hours before serving with some pine nuts. For added sweetness, you can mix in some honey or sugar. So a little patience is required, but in the end, you'll be rewarded with a beautiful, refreshing drink. Hello and welcome everyone to Yongsusan Restaurant. Before we begin, I'd like to share with you a few important protocols and etiquettes that we follow in the Korean dining culture. For example, the eldest male at the table should always be served first 
the hot foods are set to the right side of the table and the cold foods which are primarily the panchan dishes are set to the left another distinct etiquette is to use the chopsticks for picking up side dishes and the spoon for eating rice and soups only what i like so far is just about everything that i taste it has good taste to it I have not tried Korean food before. This, this is, is my first time. time. And this, this one is definitely my favorite so far. I think it reminds me more of something maybe a little American. Oh. <laughs> no, it's not um, heavy in oil and it's light. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, you want to eat yes. more. <laughs> it's not too spicy. It's just right. And these, okay, I'm in heaven. Touch it. I'm in heaven. <laughs> this is gobo, gobo root, and the brown one. And this is egg crepe. Separated in egg yolk and egg white. Now it's time to see what Dr. Dia has to say about the health and nutritional benefits of today's ingredients. Pine nuts are delicious and nutritious, but be cautious as eating large amounts may lead to a strange and rare reaction known as pine nut syndrome. The main symptom, a metallic taste that develops in your mouth a few days after you eat pine nuts, which may last anywhere from several days to several months. However, if this happens to you, don't worry, because things will return to normal eventually. I think I'm going to send some pine nuts to my ex, because he leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Thanks for watching today's special episode on Korean royal cuisines. I hope you too will discover and share this wonderful world of Korean foods with your family and friends. Until next time, take care everyone. And remember, life's delicious, so taste it. <laughs>